Hey there, Hard Times Guy here. I got some loose ends to tie up today. Like I got a lot of things going on uh, that I need to get resolved. Uh, my, my guys, they're not here today. Uh, one of these days I'm wanting to do something where you kind of meet the guys, but that hadn't worked out yet and I can't get them all here. And today they're all gone because they're on strike. Uh, they found out, uh, or they thought, they think they found out how much I'm making a whole bunch of money, uh, off of these things, and they're wanting their share, and they're wanting, uh, they formed a union, is what they've done, and, uh, so we're trying, I'm trying to talk some sense into them, which is <laughs> a chore in itself, but, uh, we'll see how that works out, I don't know whether I'll have them back or not, uh, uh, I thought they'd be out here to pick it today. They told me they would be, but they, <laughs> they ain't none of them showed up yet. I got to get that resolved. That's one of the things that's going on. Another thing that's going on is my last video where uh, I started to get uh, maybe a little bit passionate about some things and uh, I promised that I was going to do more of that. And I don't know where I'm going to, how passionate I'm going to get about more of that. Because I, uh, I think my approach has worked pretty well so far to just kind of leave that stuff alone. But crazy as the world's getting, I'm going to have to do a little bit of it, I think. And uh, so I'm going to do some of that. I'm going to do some of that today, probably in this video, but I'm not sure. Uh, I promise not to be reading stuff to you anymore, but... Uh, I'm going to break that promise when I do that because I've got something written over on the wall that's here on my computer too uh, that I wrote and it's kind of a thumbnail of my uh, philosophy about uh, life and so I'm going to start with that to kick off this new era of videos and then sometime today either in this video or in one I've got another video almost made and I'm going to either put something in it that explains the blood on the forehead in the last video uh, in the in the th it wasn't in that video but the, the thumbnail sketch of me uh, that showed up when the video showed up that you saw I had an old picture of me where I'd got knocked in the head and I'm going to tell you about that uh, just because some of you seem to want to know but uh, today I think I'm going to start uh, back where uh, that video kind of indicated I was going and talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, life lessons, my philosophy about things in life, uh, the things that are important to me and how all that relates to what's going on in this world and uh, uh, I'm going to try to stay on subject and keep it as short as I can, but I, I can't make any promises because uh, let's just get started and you'll see what I'm talking about probably. It says right here, I'm a person who when passionate about an issue will tell you what I think. And that is what I wrote. And... Uh, but it's not always true. I've already told you this. Sometimes I don't tell you what I think because I know that you're not going to like what I think. So I just, you know, let things slide once in a while just for the sake of us remaining on good terms, not ending up uh, aggravated at one another to the point that it affects our relationship. But the fact that I wrote that down tells you that I think of myself as that kind of person, someone who says what they think. That's who I think I am. And, and uh, in, in the core of my being, that is who I am. So if you get me uh, aroused to a place where my passion comes out, then I am going to tell you what I think. It goes on to say, because of this, you may have been the recipient of my advice, solicited or unsolicited. And 
my friends can tell you that that's true. Uh, there are times when I have given them advice. My family can absolutely tell you that's true. Uh, whenever I think one of them needs some advice, I'm not bashful about giving it to them, whether they want it or not. In fact, sometimes uh, I give it to them in triplicate until they tell me that, okay, Dad, or okay, honey, or okay, Grandpa, uh, that's enough. I get it. I understand what you're saying. So that happens sometimes. And then I go on in this writing to say I may have expounded on the best way to approach a doggone point or how to play right ace in euchre when you only need one point to win the game or why it's not wise to choose uh, your life mate in the dim light of a bar or a plethora of other life situations and their solutions. Those of you who know me well are fully aware that I am not bashful in sharing my thoughts on matters of great social and political importance and matters of trivial insignificance. Many of you could care less what I think. Indeed, some of you have told me as much. That's okay. You may heed my advice or not. And I'm going to stop right there and go over what I kind of just said. Basically, you can gather from what I just said there and this little... and, and This has things in general on it, you know. I was a, a bird hunter. I hunted bobwhite quail uh, most of my adult life. For 50 some odd years I had a bird dog and uh, hunted quail and loved doing it. So uh, based on that experience, I over time felt like I learned something about how to do that. And so anytime that, that first example, how to approach a bird dog on point, that's just something that I've had a lot of experience with. And uh, if you didn't know uh, anything about that, I might uh, give you some pointers on how to do that, why it's important that you do it this way and not this way. Uh, and, you know, to most of you, uh, probably 99.5% of you anyway, you don't even know what bobwhite quail hunting is and don't care. But th the point of it is, it's just that I think I have some knowledge that you don't have. And when I do and I feel like you need that knowledge, I might share it with you. Now, I won't talk to you about rocket science because I don't know anything about rocket science. I'm only trying to talk to you about something I know about. The, the part about how to play right ace in a euchre game when you only need one point. That's just a significant uh, little incident that happens sometimes. If you don't play euchre, you're not going to know what I'm talking about there either. But it doesn't matter. There's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things and there are reasons why that's true and there are reasons why you need to know them if you're going to be doing something. That's what I'm saying here. So when I have knowledge of something that I feel might be beneficial to you, I might make an attempt to share that knowledge with you. And uh, let me go on. This next thing I'm going to say it's where the controversy is probably going to begin. It says, life is full of choices. <clears throat> and then I go on to say, our place in life is pretty much a result of the choices we have made. And that's where uh, it gets kind of sticky with some people. 
I don't know whether to talk about the stickiness first or to talk about the people I'm giving this advice to first. I think I'll talk about the stickiness first. Some people want to believe that something that happened 200 years ago has a direct effect on the life that they're living today. Or something that's in their genetic makeup uh, presents them with either opportunity or uh, insurmountable difficulty that makes it impossible for them to fail or impossible for them to succeed. And some factions of people make a concerted effort to tell everybody that BS and sell it as truth. And I'm here to say it's a lie. That is not true. You have more to do with what kind of life you live, what kind of things are available to you, what kind of success or failure that you have. You have more to do about that and say about that and have an effect on that by the choices you make than any of that other crap that people try to tell you. I'm going to quit there for a minute. Actually, I'm going to repeat that part and lead you into the next part. It says, life is full of choices. Our place in life is pretty much a result of the choices we have made. And then this is the important part. It says, the people I care about most are the ones I will pray, they're the ones I pray will give careful consideration to my life views so that they make quality decisions. The ones I love are the ones I want to treasure God and family and friendships. I'm going to stop there again and I may go back and read that over again. Did you hear what I just said? If you're listening to this video and you don't have any idea about me or who I am or what I believe or what I uh, am talking to you about, but, and I've said something that you thought, that's, you know, that's crap. I don't, that this guy's one of those uh, loons from this side of the issue or this side of the issue, whichever side of the issue you think I'm on. He's just one of those guys and he's uh, telling me that stuff uh, to try to gain some advantage for his ideology or his beliefs or his. What I just read to you is that you out there that are here in this video, I don't know who you are. You're from all walks of life, I'm sure. Uh, if you haven't already turned this off, I'm probably narrowing down the ones that are still listening to me by some of the things I've said. But what I'm saying to you are the things that I say to people that I care about the people I love, my family, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and my friends. They're the people that I talk like this to. I'm not trying to change who they vote for. I'm not trying to make money or profit or gain power or anything like that from these people. I'm trying to tell them the way it is, the best 
that I know it and understand it from my life's experience so that they can deal with life because I love them. I care about them. I want them to have a good life. I want them to be happy. I want them to be successful. That's why I tell them these things. So if you're hearing them, you're not hearing something that I'm trying to get you to agree with me on. You're hearing what I tell people I love. I want them to place a high value on attributes like honesty, loyalty, and moral character. Get this next part because this is the, this is the sentence that sums it all up between me and them. And them are, again, those people that I care the most about. This is what I say. And this, I'm, I'm going to say in a sentence, this is my life's philosophy. I want them to approach life like it's a great competition whose outcome means something. I said in a sentence, but it's going to be more than one sentence because that's the end of that sentence. But I'm going to stop there at the end of that sentence and tell you there's a couple more sentences coming. Approach life like it is a great competition whose outcome means something. In other words, Live your life, make your choices, let your actions be controlled by this mindset. Life is a great competition and the outcome of it means something. It's not something meaningless. It's not an exercise. It's not a show up and get your trophy. Approach it like you would a competition and go at it like it means something, like it matters whether you win or lose, like it matters whether you succeed or fail. That's what I'll tell people that I love. That's what I want them to do. I go on. I want them to play hard, work diligently, and love unconditionally. I've always been someone who enjoyed games, and I've always been someone who enjoyed winning games. And it doesn't matter what the game is. Uh, checkers, basketball, tic-tac-toe, it, it doesn't matter. I wanted to know how to play, what the best strategy was, what the, the disciplines you had to learn to be successful at it, and then I played it as hard as I could, and I always tried to win. And uh, if you don't believe that, uh, go find some of my adult grandchildren and ask them about when they were growing up, did Grandpa ever let them win? I wanted them to win. I wanted to, it. Nothing would make me happier than for them to win, for them to beat me. But for it to mean anything... They had to beat me. I couldn't let them win. I want them to understand that it takes work and perseverance and discipline to win. So, play hard. Work diligently. That means put your best into it. Be determined. Be like a bulldog. Get in there and get hold of it and don't let go of it. Keep giving it your best. When you get done, if you don't get the outcome you want, I don't want you to have to look back and, and say, I didn't give that my best. That's what I tell people I love. I tell them it's worth the effort and the work that you put in it. 
And you need to know that you're doing that every day, all the time. And the last thing I say is love unconditionally. And you say, what the heck is that? Love unconditionally. First thing I'm going to say about that is, we choose to love. Remember when this all started talking about choices and life being a series of choices and the choices we make? I'm telling you something. This is, this is important for you to understand. We choose to love. People think they fall in love. They don't fall in love. People fall in a vat of chocolate or people fall into other pleasant or unpleasant things. Nobody falls in love. They make a conscious choice to love somebody or something and then they work at it diligently. If they don't, it don't happen. Too many, there's too many things in life that come along to upset things, to, to mess everything up, to divide and confuse and too much like that in life and in, in the places we go and the things that we do for you to think that love is an accident. Love isn't an accident. We choose to love and then we act like it and we work at it and we sacrifice for it and we give when everybody else wants to take. That's what love is about. Till you understand that, you can't understand love unconditionally because unconditionally means no matter what. And that's what happens to a lot of love that people think they fell into. Uh, the no matter what's come. And it's something they wasn't expecting. Something that they didn't think was part of the program. Something that they didn't know about. And then it's like, well, <laughs> I don't love that anymore. Or I don't love them anymore. Or I, you know, she killed all the love I had for her. That's not how unconditional love works. You're saying, hard times guy, you kind of got off of your normal schedule again today, and yeah, I did. The last thing I can say is, the most important advice I can offer to all those I love is this. Choose Jesus. And that's a whole other subject in and of itself. And I'm not going to go into that today. But it is what enables you to make the choices, have the discipline to stay with it, and be unconditional in your commitments that I talked about here. I uh, tended to go uh, on with this into some other areas. But I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I am going to do one thing. <laughs> Just for my hard times uh, chronicles that when I hear me talk about antiques or uh, hard times originals or that kind of thing, which I haven't talked about at all in this particular video. Uh, in one of my videos, I believe it's the one uh, about the, the best auction I ever intended, or I ever attended, I'm sorry. Uh, the one that talks about Everett Green and his mint green Cadillac. The cover picture that you see when you're looking at the list of... Um, videos that I've made. There's a couple of uh, pictures there of a little cabinet, about yay tall, about that wide, 
It's green. Uh, it's got, I think it's got 10 drawers in it. Uh, the bottoms of the drawers, the bottoms of nine of the drawers are made from oil cans. They got oil company advertisement in the bottoms of them because they had, somebody actually took and cut the bottom out of a can and made the bottom of the drawer out of those. One of the drawers uh, doesn't have that. It has a, a normal wooden bottom in it and on the bottom of that drawer it says uh, Hard Times Originals and my name and some date and I don't know what exactly uh, the date was. It doesn't matter. I'm, I made that Hard Times Original a number of years ago and I sold that little cabinet uh, I think I sold it in a booth I had at the corner of 16th and 8th Street in a business called Peddler's Corner back when Anna Whitting ran that business. I sold that cabinet in that booth, I think. The point I want to make today is if you, the listener, know where that cabinet is who has it or if you're somebody that does have it if you're not and you know the person that has it get this message to them I would like to have that cabinet back and today I'm saying if that cabinet is in reasonably good shape like it was when you bought it I will pay two hundred dollars for it Maybe you don't want to sell it, that's all right. Uh, but if you do, and $200 is an attractive price, I know that's more than you paid for it, probably at least double more than you paid for it. But, you know, this is a different day, a different time. I will give $200 for that cabinet if it's still in good shape. And that's what I'm going to end this video with. Thank you for your time. This is the Hard Times Guy. Subscribe to my channel, like or dislike this video, have a good day.